I know we ran into some technology issues. Um, okay, so uh, welcome to 70 County Code Slide Design Review Committee meeting. The Design Review Committee, as established in the zoning regulations, is appointed by the Board of Supervisors. Today is Thursday, uh, May 11th, 2023, and now is 1.51 p.m. This hearing consists of two projects. Meeting participants can either attend this meeting in person or uh, through Zoom. This meeting is being audio recorded. There are two opportunities for the public to speak, including the oral communications for matters not on the agenda and a separate uh, public comment session for each project on the agenda. Please review the agenda to identify which item you wish to speak on and the time of that item. The chair will open public comment sessions during the um, public comment period and for each item on the regular agenda. I will first read comments received before the meeting into the record, then I will ask those members of the public who wish to uh, comment to click to click the raise hand feature to raise your hand and speak on uh, that agenda item. For those joining by phone, please press start nine to indicate your desire to speak. For uh, participants on Zoom, if, if, we, if you wish to speak, please fill out uh, for uh, participants in in-person participants, if you wish to speak, please fill out a speaker form, which is available on the rear table uh, of the room. Once completed, please uh, co please complete. Uh, please make sure all fields are completed and provide a form to me prior to um, the item you wish to speak on. Please limit your speech to three minutes or less. And uh, please note that members of the public must wait for my prompt in connection with each agenda item before using the raise hand function. Uh, for example, you cannot raise your hand at the at the beginning of the meeting for an agenda item that's later in this meeting. When you hear your name or last four digits of your uh, phone number called, I'll prompt you to unmute your account uh, or come to the front to um, and, uh, and inform you may begin speaking. Uh, I will then ask you to state your name, address, and email address for the record. For those joining by phone, uh, please press start six to unmute. Uh, or mute your microphone. The design will come to the decision for item two today. If any, will be uh, only will be only a recommendation regarding project compliance, and not the final decision on this project. The decision of which will take place at a later day. The design review committee's decision for item one, if any, are uh, is appealable to the planning commission within ten working days by filing an appeal and paying the applicable filing fee. If you would like to file an appeal, please contact the project planner whose email address is listed on the uh, agenda under uh, their respective project. The appeal will be accepted by 5 p.m. Uh, on May 25th, 2023, depending on the scale <clears throat> and scope of changes, continued projects may be placed on next month's agenda if revisions are submitted to the county by, uh, by the end of business day, Friday, May 19th, 2023. Applicants should note that uh, continuance letters may not be available by that day and are encouraged to take notes of the committee's feedback. The next uh, co-site design of the company meeting will be held on Thursday, June 8, 2023. And now the item one of the agenda is the roll call. Katie Kostuk. Rebecca Ketkin. Here. Mark Stackmeyer. Here. Beverly Garrity. Not present. Linda Patterson. Not present. Uh, John Statman. Not present. With that, I turn it over to the chair. Again, but I'm going to start off with the same thing as I always do. The concerned citizens that are sitting out there again today. Um, the Coast Design Review Committee, CDRC, is appointed by the Board of Supervisors to ensure and the new development is compatible with the physical setting and site of the visual character of the neighborhood and provide a platform for neighbors to for neighborhood residents to communicate their concerns for the community of Ontario West Beach, El Granada, Miramar. So that is bring up the things that I always bring up and Camille can here to answer much stuff. But we, um, we're talking about demonstration of scale and the story polls again, and then some uh, citizen put out there um, on my petition. Yeah, and uh, uh, sorry, um, 
the community members please speak louder because we have some audio issues and we are now relying on the uh, the building uh, speaker so please speak louder for so everyone can hear yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> I'll thank do you my best. thank you <laughs> Uh, so then I might ask, because one of the people that are in the room, um, did you get any response to that, Mark? Um, I, I didn't get any uh, comments on the, the, the petition format and text. Did you take any take on it? Did, and did the county say anything about it? Uh, anything about that? Yeah, Camille said that it's not. Um, my it's that. a conflict of interest. For them to respond. respond. Yeah, to, to respond. To it. So um, I, I, I'll be glad to talk to David about posting it and just you know, putting it out there and looking for, for folks to, to sign up on it. I mean, if you'll put it out, I'll get it posted mm -hmm. somehow. I'll get it piece out here and then we'll get it out to the public. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. I can send you a link. Yeah. Can you clarify what the petition is kind of getting? Sure. Yeah, the, the petition in, in essence um, is uh, is requesting um, a, a change to the policy for the SMC outside demonstration of public scale policy, uh, which would advocate for the the, the requirement that public polls be, be be used for for projects above. Um, I think it's twelve or I forget the exact wording. But uh, in, in essence, it's advocating for story polls. It looks like the same thing as that administration still story poll configuration. Mm -hmm. What we suggested. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that appeared to me. I do reference like a city for a few policy, which has, I think, some pretty good information. Um, when to require it and the parameters in the yeah. yeah. If, if any of that does move forward, that was definitely something that we went over in. A lot of detail, and we have looked at other different municipalities and how they handle their historical policies and demonstrations of scale. So, if, if it's helpful, you guys can always kind of reference those earlier warnings. Oh, okay. Is it the 2018? Um... No, it was after 2018. Um, I think it was when we were virtual. Glenn, were you okay. around when we were still when we were talking about that? Oh, uh, okay, please. Uh, please, please, please. Yeah, I mean, we were still meeting here. What, what's the topic you're discussing right now? We were talking about uh, it was when we were working on uh, the CDRC's recommendation for how a demonstration of scale could be handled. Uh, I don't I think, think I was part of it. When Ramel was here. Yeah, when Ramel was here. So Ramel was yeah. here so with the council. Familiar. So if that does become something that you guys want to like reference or look back on and see what was discussed, mm -hmm. um, Camille can probably you know, figure yeah. out. Which hearing it was, and if not that early, we'll be able to figure it out. You guys can pull the recordings from it. Okay. So those are back up and support. Yeah, I mean, we had looked at Town of Hillsborough, we looked at yeah. a couple of other municipalities that had interesting language, and we had talked about different ways to measure the height, you know, to try to keep the cost down for applicants without having to certify story poles. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that there was some useful information that might be helpful if you get some community support to move that forward. Okay. And you can still email me an idea. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I'll send it to you. I'll find your email. Okay. Yeah, the demonstration of scale, even like last week, was used again anyway in, in, in the configuration that you need uh, the second one. <clears throat> so I do think it's important, and I don't think it's cost prohibitive anymore. You, know, you might be able to throw up the budget, but in the way that I was. Anything that's over uh, to me was unanticipated. It's in, in, in more mass or volume in the house. It's next to the other neighborhood. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be in the I think it's good that it's been asked. I think we've been suggesting that at least something that was more than one story yeah. or like a second story addition or something, you know, that it makes sense to have like one square projects under a certain height. Yeah, I mean, I. I sort of question the second story additions sometimes because sometimes they're very modest additions. We can talk about like if the room where you're at, if you're building something two stories. Mm -hmm. uh, I was always opposed to the past. Yeah, I don't think it's a because you get to this side of it. Just kind of understand a little bit more. Well, you want to see, yeah. And you want people to understand that even historically, it's not probably very very well. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but he actually had a petition goal to get other people to sign. Draft on. language. I think at the last meeting, the, the discussion was it was a maybe a conflict of interest for you guys to create it. But if a public resident, created yeah, it. basically grassroots effort yeah. gets a little bit more attention than. <laughs> Um, and I just want to reiterate we just do a one project per hour for our next. <laughs> Design standards updates. I can't remember what she said that time while we're sitting here, but she hasn't. Yeah, so what, what Camille told us, and if you weren't here, so I'll kind of just mm -hmm. summarize. Camille said that basically um, the long range planning meeting already happened. Um, where they determined what's on a long range planning for, I think it's March to March. Yeah. Um, so basically through March of 2024. And they put the C1, or no, the measurement of height, just the measurement of height. The height measurement is on long range planning for that year. Okay. Um, but there's too many other things on long range planning. So the demonstration of scale and C1 videos are still not in long range planning yet. But Nor is a demonstration of scale, just the height. Well, the demonstration of scale, yeah, they they updated the policy to cover the county legally, basically, oh. and then um, didn't really make any changes in response okay. to the committee. So, if that's something that one, that's going to move forward, it's going to be to have a lot more sweet deals, I think. Okay. And then that would have to also get assigned to Palm Beach Plan. I just, at a certain point, I think that it might be worthwhile to figure out how to get urgency ordinances to support some things instead of just long range planning because long range planning is it's just a moving target for us we rarely ever get what we're asking for mm -hmm. on the long range planning yeah yeah, yeah. Did you say, uh, they can do they can do urgency ordinances yeah but i think that that's where you need to have to have a lot of community support and then maybe that would get more calls. Um, hey, Glenn. Oh, hey. Can you maximize the, the Zoom screen? Yes, sure. Make it a little bit bigger for everybody. Yes. Um, C, uh, CDRC recruiting positions. Um, yeah, that's where I started asking you concerned citizens of the community if anybody's interested to please sign up for CRC and um, it's just not always just in your neighborhood but it would be grateful if you get some other people to the board we're going to be losing a board member again soon so, um, yeah, and I did see on the um, CDRC on the county website, they do have postings there that they're they're looking to fill the vacancies. Um, so I think that they you know, there's a little bit of urgency now. Today, you know, the plan. What's that? People This gets thrown away. Yeah, I, I tried to get I tried to get clarity from people. I was working with the people at the county to ask them what happens if there's not a job. You are not going to ask me again if I've heard anything about increasing the spending. For helping with recruitment, and I wrote back and I was like, "No, she didn't say anything." By the way, I resigned, and he was like, "Uh oh." So, oh yeah. <laughs> so maybe I'll have to actually like it's because she figured out what happens if they're not informed with the projects. Yeah. I said she should be a tough kind of guy. Uh huh. <laughs> so there's so many others. I can get these that can that got out to the you know what has to be help and everybody can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you find a workaround, everybody's going to want a workaround. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's why I won't do all of our tech positions because mm -hmm. I can't, yeah, basically for the once or twice a year that I might need to serve on a committee, I wouldn't be able to present any of my projects. Yeah. Like the whole rest of the time. So it's a big, it's, we can't present our own work. So it's a big impact for professionals. Mm -hmm. 
So um, I was going to open to a public comment. Nobody has anything to say regarding uh, when? Uh, for this project? No, no, no. no. No, it's for not just um, oh, sorry. that is not on the agenda. Uh, and now uh, I have the speaker for us. Yeah, so if there is any, um, if you'd like to speak on this item, please raise your hand. And then if you're uh, joining uh, the meeting um, by phone, please press the star, um, please press star nine to raise your hand. And for those on Zoom, you can raise, use the raise hand feature to uh, raise and unraise your hand. I'll give, uh, Participants, um, and seconds to decide if you uh, want to speak on this item. This item is for um, our communications for items not on the agenda. Okay, I don't see any raise hands uh, from people in the room and from people on Zoom. So, um, yeah, so chair. Please indicate if you'd like to close um, the public comment section. Okay. Okay, so the, the uh, public comment uh, for item call agenda section has been closed. And uh, now we are moving to item one. And uh, we have our project planner here at Kenoa Ken Kelly. And now uh, Kenoa. You may unmute yourself and please let me know if uh, I need to promote any um, applicant or public owner to panelists. Let me see if who's in the participants here. Okay, can you please let me know the name of the participants? I'm a project Oh, you're the project. Okay, so you're here. Okay. Okay, so you may take those. Oh, so we got them in person. Closer to the laptop there. So as I mentioned earlier, we're having some audio problem here. So it's a little weird and I'm sorry for the inconvenience. So just please stay, when you speak, please stay uh, closer to the laptops. Thank you. Excuse me. Oh. Did you ask the participants to speak up since we have the microphones? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Glenn, can you sit a little closer? Because <laughs> 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 I can't hear. Oh, you mean this? Oh, here? No. So I'm gonna, oh, this thing. Okay. Copy paste. I'm gonna start by reading this, and then you can do. Um, you can. Uh, yeah. Um, the owner, Mark Cheney, uh, applicant is James Carroll. Uh, um, file number PLN 2022-00145, uh, location is 443 5th Street, Montana, accessible person number 036-063-180. Consideration of a design review permit for the construction of the 239 square foot, addition to existing one-story, 1,459 square foot single family residence on 5,001 square foot legal parcel. This Project involves only minor grading and no tree removal. The project is not appealable to the California Coastal Commission. Application deemed, application deemed complete March 8th, 2023. Project planner, Kanoa Kelly. And with that, I would like to ask you to um, tell us about the project. Good afternoon, members of the council. Um, my name is James McCarroll. I'm the project architect for the project. And I have with me Mr. and Mrs. Mark Cheney. We're here as well. Um, the project entails a 239 square foot um, entry and sunroom addition at the front of the property. You can see it in the, in the rendering here. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Mark Cheney have had the pleasure of residing in Montara since 2006. And I have raised the three children here in the community. Um, in 2020, during the COVID pandemic, Cheney's um, had been a circumstance where they were um, absent take custody of their three nieces and one nephew. 
Um, they suddenly went from a family of five to a family of nine living in a three bedroom home. Um, we completed a small rear addition uh, about a year or two ago. That was the exact from Coastal Design Review. Canola was the planner on that. That provided them some additional room and space for the children. Um, but we're now seeking to add a little front entry and sunroom here now uh, to provide the children a place to bring in their bags, to take off their shoes, and also um, provide a little study area that would be closed off from, from the main uh, living room and, and kitchen area. Um, this will provide them an area to uh, study and have a little bit quiet space. Um, it's just really lovely. I, I got the plans about to move over, but it's really slow. And you, you can see it right here. Okay. And we've created this kind of a um, folding door so that area could be closed off so they could have a private. And then here's an entry or foyer area where essentially they could have a place to sit down, take off their shoes and, and store their book bags in there. So, so this is the project here, this, this edition, this front entry edition. Um, we hope that you view the proposed project favorably and uh, would welcome the opportunity to answer any questions, comments, or concerns. Um, yeah, that so I'm, 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 i a roof, if you look at the screen, you can see my first. Is there a roof from here over? Well, it's really well. Yeah. Like that little uh, new paper walkway, there's a flat roof there, right? There, There is a flat roof here, yes. And then this is a hip roof here okay. over this area. Um, I was curious if there was a reason that, you're, that the that little walkway is being created rather than adding that space to the Absolutely. Um, we do consider that our issue is that this is a bedroom and this is an egress window. So we can't really capture that space without um, without an issue to this egress window for this bedroom here. Mm -hmm. Courtyard space. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That was my only question. Do you have any questions? I don't think so. Did you go to the elevation? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm actually curious about, I'm sure we can start with the uh, It'll show up in a minute. Okay. The, um, just can you clarify, are the exterior materials on the addition just matching the existing? Sure, thing? absolutely. Um, <laughs> with a moment to come up here. The existing building is clad in stucco. <laughs> and um, just here. So this is all stucco. It's just all stucco, and we're just going to match that that stucco, same stucco on the front. And uh, and the roofing and everything. Roofing, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's just composition, asphalt, compo, roof, and we're just going to match that. We're going to kind of mirror the hip on the, on the garage. Are those the same size, or is the new hip a little smaller? The new hip's a little bit, a little bit smaller. Okay. Do you have any questions, Mark? I don't. Okay. Also, some renderings towards the end. Okay. Two thirty. I'll be there on the fourth. Do you have any other questions, comments, concerns? Um. Okay. Uh, is there any? Question for the public. Oh, yeah, yeah. public comment. Do you have any public comments for anybody in the audience? Like the about the okay, and then uh, we're now opening up for public comments. For those in the room, Mr. Like, if you have any public comments, fill out, fill out a uh, speaker form. 
And now for those on Zoom, please come, please read, use, uh, press star nine to raise it and raise your hand. And for those joining by phone, please press star. Uh, yeah, please press star nine to raise it and raise your hand. For those on Zoom, please use, use the raise hand, on, raise hand feature on Zoom. I'll give people uh, two more seconds. I don't see any raised hands for any speaker forms. So yeah, please, um, yeah, I'll give people 10 more seconds to decide whether you want to speak on this agenda item, item number one. Okay, um, I don't see any raised hands. Uh, Chair, please indicate if you'd like to um, close public comment. I thought it was close public comment. Thank you. Anybody have any concerns in that? I saw my concern neighborhood very well. I'm not there. But okay. And, uh, there's only two things that I want to respect that I can come to that. Um one of them is the window styles. Okay. All of the window styles on existing on the side of windows. And we've got uh Two double hums that are proposed at the front and uh, on the side. This on the other side of the sheet. It'll pull in a second. Um, and then on the left side of the house, there's a long list of three kinds of windows. Um, maybe can the applicant just tell us what you were, how, why you made those decisions? Not what you're yeah. nodding your head. Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, with the front facade, we did, we did at one point have a slider there. It's just, with the double homes, I think it looks a little bit more um, traditional and kind of fitting with the style of the uh, existing building. And it, it's just, the sliders look a little stark to me. And it just gives a little more character and fits with the character of the building. In terms of these, um. These awnings here, um, we wanted to create a space on the interior for the children to have um, a wall and a TV, but still bring in some natural light up above. Um, so that was that was the reason for those those windows there. Is that because it's concerning, sorry, uh, Can you go back to the front? I mean, on this facade, it's not concerning to me because it's the only window on this facade. So I don't love to see three different types of windows to the project when it's avoidable, but we see a lot of these higher transom up there, short windows for interior furnishing reasons, and there's nothing adjacent to it on this facade that makes it feel problematic. And I so at least there's no other like windows on it. So yeah, yeah, I think that that's okay. I mean, before I switch back to the front, yeah, I want to talk about the roof line here mm -hmm. uh, and just see it. I don't worry, it's an, an unmarked roof line, but I think that it also do the rest of the public. Yeah, I, I mean, don't think it's large enough that it needs to be put on. I agree. I looked at that with the with the wall plane too. I mean, I guess it's making a longer flat wall plane, but I think it's such a modest. But it, can, um, it doesn't dramatically change the way the house reads in the neighborhood. Um, on the on the front side, I also I just think a double one is a better window than a wire. Um, and again, I think that it's just being used with the garage doors. So it's you know the addition might feel better unified with the structure if it have the same type of windows, but. Um, I, I, yeah, it doesn't look kind of really appropriate and traditional. Mm -hmm. um, what's the size of that window? Three foot, three by five. Yeah, I mean, so that at that size, it could be a casement or an awning if you have a problem with seeing the. Um, Fire down the middle. Okay, well, thanks, but I would certainly think that if there's any preference you would have, that maybe we could just make that a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I would be okay with it being a suggestion. I guess my suggestion would be to maybe have it 
have the horizontal divider um, align with the sill height. Honestly, they're not in the same thing at all. Mm -hmm. I don't really think it matters that much. If, if it was closer in the same plane or on the same actual wall, then I would be a little bit more concerned with it. But would you feel better if the, the is that end front entry door on your door also? No. No. And that they just need to look it. It's being relocated. Yeah, we're just going to remove and um, and reinstall it. It's uh, it's fairly new. Know, I believe more over here too. Oh yeah, it's a fiberglass door. Yeah. It shows the roof was the same. That's a three twelve. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, I can see making a suggestion to consider unifying the styles of windows by using the cells. The line there, but I, I don't think that you would need to do yeah, on the bottom, top, or fix on the bottom. Oh, just to get the, the line, yeah, the line. But, but I don't think that it's really going to be noticeable. It's only noticeable on an elevation, which is the really high. Do you want to go back to the right? Like that, that egress window is set back so far. That oh, just, yeah. I don't believe so. Honestly, if, if I was going to make a suggestion, although it would be scope creep, it would be to change the other thing. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Well, It'd be more. Yeah. Really yeah. Um, but I think that's just a consideration to be mentioned. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay with, um, with the design. I think that it's, it's a modest addiction. Um, it's you know, we're talking about the existing magazine house. I don't think that the, the eve needs to be interrupted based on the mass and the length of the addition. Um, so I would be okay with just having a suggestion to be the head of this house. Okay, I don't think we have any further comments. We can just the we're back again. <laughs> Just uh, to unify the window styles, either changing the window for the bedroom to be with double homes or mm -hmm. considering a different, you know, a slider window style for the front. So the way that it that it works is we're required to give you the option to choose if you would like the committee to take a vote on the project or if you would like to request a continuance to make any changes that you would like or that you've heard from the committee and to come back at a later date. So typically people gauge whether or not they want to vote on what they're hearing in review and if there's you know a lot of things that are being asked to be changed or not. Oh, yes, please. Is there a motion? Yeah, motion to adopt suggestion. Please map the windows. Okay. And uh, I'll do the roll call. Uh, Mark Stackmeyer? Yes. Kate Coffee? Yes. Yes. Okay, we'll pass. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good luck with all those kiddos. <laughs> I have one and let me turn my hair. <laughs> so, okay, so this is the uh, this is item in one, and now uh, we have uh, six minutes for the next item, item two. So let's take a six minute break. I do also want to thank the applicant for doing story polls. That was that was very gracious for you to do that, and you know, for this scale of a project, it's Probably not as important, but it definitely goes a long way with the committee. We appreciate that effort. I got my kids to do it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. They learned a lot. Yeah. They're going to build it too? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to pause the recording until the next agenda item? Yeah, I'll pause the recording. That's really fine. Yeah. Okay, it's being auto recorded now, and now the company may begin. Okay. Uh, item number two is owners of gifts. Could you uh, turn your camera 
Uh, Gibson, Carmen Pereira, sorry, <laughs> the Cosi Market LLC. Oh, I was doing that. Okay. Okay. Then I think you can mute people. Yeah, I just have a lot of things. Uh, Applicant Edward C. Love, file number PLN 2019 00143, location 2385 Carlos Street, Moss Beach. It says the parcel number 0370972200. Consideration of design review permit recommendation for construction of two new limit four unit three story multifamily buildings. Two new four unit three story the family buildings one at 5,346 square feet, building number two at 4,815 square feet, and 20,851 square foot legal parcels associated with the hearing level coastal design, <coughs> coastal development permit, and grading permit. The project involves 955 cubic yards of grading. At 600 till 325, no tree removal, and the CDRC will not render a decision, but will make a recommendation regarding the project compliance with its design review standard. The Planning Commission public hearing on um, design review permit and CDP and GP will take place after May 11, 2023. This project is not appealable to the Coastal Commission. The planner is Camille um, and uh, Ed Love, are you going to present it? Yep. And uh, also, just one, uh, just just one thing to note. Uh, so I'm the project planner for this uh, for this project, and the Camille is uh, my supervisor. So um, any public comments or uh, questions can be emailed to either me or Camille. I'm I'm, I'm the main one comment. Okay. Where do you want? Uh, you can take a seat there, and just try to stay as close. Uh, my name is Ed Love. I'm the architect uh, for the project. Um, Gibson is also here, the owner. And uh, the summary that's on the agenda needs a little historical background. Because this is a rather unusual project. The site is called a planned unit development. Planned unit development number 121. And um, usually people aren't very familiar with a, P a PUD. A PUD is a special um, piece of land within an existing zoning district that is different than the normal zoning uh, regulations. And it's, it's different because it's a unique project, uh, very often um, comply, uh, not complying with the strict zoning ordinance, but unique in its own, serving a special use. The biggest example on the coast of a PUD is Ocean Colony. Um, Ocean Colony has all sorts of different kinds of residences. Some are zero lot line, some are very large. And years ago, when that was built, uh, that was that was designed as a PUD, a planning unit development, and they were able to do that. This site is also a plan unit development. It's called Planning Unit Development Number One Twenty One. And it started off back in 1973 when it was proposed to make that um, site, the 21,000 square feet uh, site, a planned unit development. And it was approved um, in August of 73 uh, by the county. And it was approved for 10 units um, on the site. And um, it's been that way ever since then. And it can also be uh, 36 feet high as opposed to the usual residential 
um, zoning in an R1 S17 district, which you see looking out the window here. And that height would be 28 feet. Now the units, the two buildings are really two stories over parking. And as we go through the plans and you can see in the large rendering in the back, that's really the best representation of how, how the units work with the existing parking. The building on the left is the existing building that the, Palladio, the Pilates studio was in. It has a very large parking lot in the back. That parking lot will serve building number one, which is the one on the left, the green one on the left, uh, for guest parking and also for parking for the commercial building uh, on uh, Carroll Street. As we go back up the hill, up California, building number two, uh, between building number one and number two, that's the entry to the parking that's under, under the buildings. Um, and the best view of this to understand it, well, this one's pretty good right here. There are four units in each building with the bedroom units on the lower level and the living units, the living level uh, up on the second level. The living level, of course, would have the living room, the kitchen, and the dining areas, and with views to the west uh, to the ocean. Uh, and you can see the uh, photovoltaic solar panels on the roof facing west. Um, the building on the right on Etheldor. Uh, it's two stories high on Etheldor, and that would be the entry to that building. And the entry to building number one uh, is on the stairs at the east end, at the south end of the building uh, that you can see right on that slide where it says California Street. There's a stairs going up to the second level. There is also plat platform lifts that uh, in each building that would take people up to the living level uh, on the second level of the building itself. Um, the units in building number one are approximately 1,200 square feet each. And in number two, they're a little smaller. They're about 1,100 square feet each. And we're going to make them as energy efficient as we possibly can. Uh, with the photovoltaic panels and perhaps batteries. Uh, there will be uh, EV hookups in the parking areas uh, for electric vehicles. And uh, we're designing the buildings to have as low a carbon footprint as, uh, as we can make, practically make it. Um, so if there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. The exterior material palette for us? Yes, the, uh, the exterior is hardy plank, uh, medium gray color. Uh, the trim is white trim off. And uh, we're using uh, El Dorado stone around the stairs. And uh, I think we're calling out the colors of the hardy lap siding is pearl gray. That's uh, a pre finished hardy plank. Um, one of the decisions that we made very early on is to make the buildings resemble the residential neighborhood that it's within. And um, so we have the gables that bring light in from the from the east side into the living areas. Uh, the second level, the upper level, the living level will have vaulted ceilings in it. And in the middle, you can see the uh, where the little gable roof is. That's where the uh, platform lift would be. That's that's uh, the color board for uh, that would be building number two, so facing uh, Ethelor Street. On the on the lower elevation there, underneath the gable, is that upper story? What we're seeing on the next hand side, where it's black. Uh, yeah. Is that window, or is that accent side? No, those are windows. Okay. Yeah. 
again, those ceilings are vaulted ceilings, and those are the trapezoidal windows and the triangular windows, bringing lots of um, more on the end units, a lot of southern light in. Uh, but as the sun goes around to the west side uh, during the course of the day, um, you have the, the PV panels on the west side. I also had a question about the relationship of these two renderings. The upper rendering, there's a small gabled volume in front and center. Yes. It looks on that rendering like it's forward of what's below it, but on the side rendering, it looks like there it's in flame. It's um, does that volume come all the way down to the ground? Yes, that's where the platform lift is. Okay. It just says a little bit of flame that extends above it. And do you have um, offhand? Can you tell me how much uh, landscape area you're including for the project? Oh, we did calculate that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it's in the uh, on the Carlos Street side because there's a 20 foot setback there, and we also have it on the California side. I don't have the square footage. It might be in the plan somewhere, but I don't have it uh, off the top of my head. It might be on the uh, one of the last sheets, the L1. It's been calculated. Yeah, but I don't know how quickly that would keep up with either. Mm -hmm. I don't know how quickly that would keep up. Can I take back on that question? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I saw in your renderings mm -hmm. that there's right where I've got this red cloud, it looks like there's a trellis with some plants. Um, I don't see it on the landscape plan, and I didn't see that applied at building two. And I wasn't sure if that was just a rendering thing or if that's the intended design. No, we intend to do that. And that came along after the landscape plan was done. So okay. that, that'll be on there. Will that be on both buildings? Yes. Mark, can you capture that as something? And that can be a condition, of course. And can you, sorry, can you also, um, Tell me how the parking that you're creating is divided up between our space is allocated one to each unit, two to each unit. You mentioned that some of them are also going to serve the building below. Yeah, if we look at the site plan, the, um, the lower, lowest level site plan. I think you have 16 spots. There you go. Yeah. yeah, it's split between two sheets. So this is the one that's um, commercial and guest, and then this is the one that's for the dedicated for the units. I guess what was that makes more sense. Okay, I think what I was confused about is does someone have to drive through under where the piers are to reach the spots that are dedicated to commercial parking? The commercial parking that has its own driveway. Right yeah. Okay. That's the driveway that's there now, and that'll be so uh, it'll be repaved. No but, connection between the two parking. No. Okay. So that's the main parking there where you're. But they are entering that parking under the building and then pulling out to the left. So the Either left or right. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? No. Um, I have a big picture question. Um, <laughs> with this being a PUD, I wasn't sure. Um, on the cover sheet, it doesn't tell you any of the allowable floor areas or lot coverage, and is I don't know how that's regulated with the PUD for the specific. Yeah, so I can I can respond to that question. So as you may uh, as you may see on the meeting web page, I uploaded the code section uh, of PUD one twenty one. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's available on the meeting page, and uh, PUD is a unique uh, zoning district, as um, the applicant just mentioned. So there's minimum um, site development standards. So here, uh, as you can see on the zoning regulations for PUD 121, there's only a development standards regarding setback regulation, maximum of the building height, and um, some other miscellaneous uh, requirements. It doesn't, it doesn't, um, so this one doesn't, doesn't have, there's no requirement yeah. for coverage for the core area. No, okay. it doesn't have that. So it's mainly case by case. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the garage head? Eight feet. Eight. Eight. 
there's really not a garage they're all is it a carport a car, sort of a carport yeah i mean it's it's under the building it. under the floor of the building under the first floor of the building okay, i think that's all i have for clarifying questions and marcus you have any just that one Okay. Well, let's get the public comment. Be an interesting there. structural job. Um, oh, actually, I was going to ask that. Sorry, I was going to ask if you'd engage the structural engineer yet. If they've looked at it. Not yet. Okay. okay, we're back. We're back. Yeah. It's a little bit. I'm glad you know. Okay. Yeah, let's give people uh, some time to rejoin. Yeah, hi, um, all the attendees. So we just got disconnected uh, from the internet. So yeah, so if you don't hear us like for the in the past five minutes, that now that means um, yeah, so confirm the loss of internet. And uh, now we're we're back on, and uh, that's 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 resume the meeting. Why don't you that's you then make sure the meeting is still being audio recorded. Yeah, so this meeting is being audio recorded and now uh, we may resume. Does the still there? Yeah, they're still there. I see six participants here. Yeah. Okay. And okay, so the next step is to open up for public comments. Do you have speakers? Lives? Yeah, I have speakers. Lives. So they all kind of they don't come to or they mix? Um, I don't know. Yeah, so I'll just call the name and okay. I'll just receive. And um, for those on Zoom, please click the raise hand feature to raise your hand. And for those joining by phone, please um, please press star nine to raise and I'll raise your hand. And now we're opening up a big comment session for item number two. And uh, the first speaker form I receive is from Kelly Robinson. <laughs> I don't want to take anybody's time too much. Um, maybe you can say address and give me a yeah, just your comment on the project. Okay. Um, just wanted, your, uh, yeah, just so your, switch to three minutes for that. And also read your name, email address, and address to the record. So Kelly Robinson, okay, Kelly Robinson at gmail.com. Um, we're building off uh, the lot that will be named 717 and full door. So about two or three doors down across from the new proposed apartment. 
and I think it looks beautiful. My husband and I love the the nice um, curbs and gutters and sidewalks that the community will have. I think it's a beautiful design. So congrats to you, Mr. Edward Love. Thank you. And uh, we're in full support. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, next one is Joe Gunther. Please read your name, uh, email address, and add oh, address to the record. I don't want to uh, give my email address. Okay, just say yeah. your name. Yeah, Joe Gunther, 818 Ethel Door. I own the property, the vacant land in the building there for the last 30 plus years. And I've known Gibson for quite a few years too. And I'm in favor of this project as well. Um, not because I own the vacant land across the street, <laughs> seriously, but because it's it's made it's uh, helping solve the housing crisis we have in the state of California. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next speaker is Scott Newer. Oh, I know the name. <laughs> I promise you it's new. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I wish I could be quite as succinct, but uh, you know. So, um, my name's Scott Dewar. Um, I'm a here as well. Um, we live on 776 Sesame Street. We are exactly one block up, looking directly out. So, we have a clear uh, line of sight to this property, and we expect to see the entire Ethel Door Street facade. Uh, I'm just going to do the I, My perspective is sort of general. Uh, the thought, thousand foot perspective rather than knowing all the granular aspects of it. But as the gentleman said before, the coastside is in desperate need of housing. And you can fairly debate the affordability of additional housing that should be constructed, but the high market pressure needs to be relieved somehow. So we can't sustain a NIMBY approach for too much longer. Um, my perspective is that the Moss Beach community needs to do its part to allow appropriate, well-considered residential development. And Kathy and I consider this particular development as about as good as one can hope for. It utilizes the space very well, allowing good density for the size of the property, and it's a bit better used than converted to commercial or laying fallow. The public infrastructure accommodates the project well, providing future owners with ready access to the highway without adding traffic on surface streets. There's a lot of, you know, other projects that could be done further out and they'd be going through all the rest of the neighborhood. So this is really nice that way. Um, it's you know, certainly more appropriate than the uh, Cypress Point housing project. I consider the design very attractive. Uh, I love that we're improving, you know, with sidewalks and gutters. And this is the kind of thing that Ethel Door Street needs in particular. Um, and, you know, also Gibson is someone who's deeply invested in the community. So I trust it will be well maintained and he will continue to be sensitive to the inputs and concerns from neighbors as a good neighbor. Uh, you know, I know visibility is going to be an issue here. Much apologies, <laughs> our most direct. Uh, we appreciate the block views are concerned for residents proximate along Ethelor. As for ourselves, as I previously said, we will get an eyeful of this complex. However, currently from our location on Stetson Street, this property and the affected view shed is not exactly pretty as it currently stands. Looking west, the view consists of a vacant lot of weeds, a rather ugly backside of a commercial building, and an equally unattractive AT&T building, as well as the asphalt of San Carlos Street and Highway 1. So the aesthetics of this proposed property is definitely an upgrade. While it is multi-story, there is nothing of great value that it would block for our family other than our sordid entertainment of the many car accidents that occur on California and I one. I can live without that. So we think it's a net positive. My only concerns would be uh, in relationship to the amount of light it would throw back you know, in, in our direction. I imagine that's something that this committee will you know, consider and generally is dealt with. Another thing would be those the ingresses and egresses to these structures are a little tight and hopefully are being well dealt with. Now, California Street is a pretty wide street. Um, hopefully, you know, it, it's steep. And it's, old, it's not, not as steep as going up the next no. street. <laughs> but you're right. You yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the right job. And um, 
And then, you know, I just hope that also, too, I mean, it's not exactly about this development, but I think it's integrated to it. This is just calls again for the need of doing something appropriate at California and Highway 1 to deal with all the traffic and strange things that are happening there. But I think it's a great project. I'm totally in support of it. And to us, it's an improvement. So that's my Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. And the next speaker is P.A. Audrey. Sorry if I don't yeah. pronounce her name. Uh, my name is Pierre. So uh, uh, I live across the street in this uh, project. My house is 820 square feet. I have a three year old. Uh, our house feels really small, but what makes it big is the view. Uh, this threatens my view. I'm concerned with the scale. I'm also concerned with any windows having a direct line of sight inside of my house. I'd like to remain private, the privacy of my home. Um, there are improvements over the previous proposal. The parking lot not being on Ethel Door does not rob me and my neighbor of our parking spaces. So that's notable. There, the building is slightly slanted, which seems like it would be less likely to rob me of my, my light, you know. But I question why this building is as tall as it is and why it's not at the height of this one. Uh, I'm not sure why we need this. I'm not sure why windows would be pointing towards me when the ocean view is this direction, but I guess it's not a loft. So maybe it doesn't look directly in my living room. Um, the uh, front view of this foot in the street show trees in front of the windows that would be pointing at me, which I would appreciate, but I'm not seeing this in the latest drawings. So I question again, uh, on the street, there were trees over here. They were sketched up. Are they so yeah, there's some on the landscape plan. I, I suspect that those were probably left off of the elevation so you could see the building itself, but they are on the landscape. So are those intended to be there? And would those grow tall enough to obstruct those windows so you don't have a direct sight? Do you have the same thing that have, those trees looked at? Do you have? Do you yeah, so I think, like well, they will grow and up to 30 feet. Okay. So they were, and the windows that you're talking about, the very high windows, the gables. Can you give me the uh, ethyl door? Yeah. Again, it'll, it'll get there inside. Okay. <laughs> those windows up high, the gables are, um, those are like 12 feet up in the air. Nobody can see through those. So it's, it's not something that they're up in the ceiling. Yeah. It's a vaulted ceiling, and those are cut into the, the vaulted ceiling. So nobody would be uh, looking out those. And if you look from your house, all you're going to see is the ceiling on the other side of the room. Moving. Yeah. 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 It doesn't say on the site plan the mature height. I height just don't think it says 30 to 35 feet according to the internet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this storm room you can see up on the screen, that's how high it is. So that's just going to bring light into the space, but not. What's, what's the top of the ridge relative to Ethel? So what's, what's that elevation? I can't see. Well, right here. Yeah, but that's from Billis. Oh, actually, I just, I just met her. Um, yeah. It was like 24, 24 foot one and a half from El Twenty, I'm sorry, right? 24 foot uh, one, 24 feet, zero and a half inches. Basically the same as a two story house. So from the, from the Ethel door side, it's a two story right. elevation, right. and then it's going down the hillside. Well, that doesn't really show. It looks like it's two stories above the above yeah. building. Yeah. There. Oh, like the original sketch. Yeah.
I don't think, but we will see. And actually, your house is quite a ways away because the setback from Ethel Door is 20 feet, and I think the setback on your house is 20 feet too. Did you see it, John? Plus the width of the uh, of the street. So it has slipped up slightly from the street level, but so there is also some a point for the community and how it was developed over time. My house was built in 1920. There are seven commercial buildings that were built after. None of them impact my view. There is a department building to the left of me that was used as a scale. That building was also built in 1920 before anybody else's house was built across the street. So there's no view to be taken at the time. Um, you can see that both houses are built towards the back of their lots so they can look above the apartment building as a result. So there's cause and effect. And what is true for Ethical is re repeated on Stetson. Scott's house is a three story house, but it is one story at street level, Oceanside. And that is true for pretty much every house on Stetson Street. If they're Oceanside, they're one story top. So this is a break from the norm. If the if it was more like one story at the street level, then I would be maintaining the norm we currently have. I understand there's a PUD in it. In the example, well, even though it wasn't a PUD, a 28 foot high house would be allowed there if it was residential. Yeah, I mean, there's there's what you can legally do and what is the norm. Uh, what if it's a neighborhood? Right, what if it's a neighborhood? Uh, there's something to be considered too for Scott. You're saying um, if it if the scale changes, it will ripple throughout the community, right? I was looking to expand my house, and I was getting quotes for digging out the basement. You know, if this goes up, I'll be considering going up and technically legally add a floor above my house. So can Pat and Jim. You know, will likely want to do that, <laughs> and that will impact your view. As of now, we're, we're not really considering that because. We're considerate of our neighbors, but you know, if our view goes, we have the right to add a floor and maintain our view. So it needs to be voiced. You know, that's all. We have a motion for you. I do for now. Uh, I, I mean, I, I never. That just seems like the cypress trees and all that. The cypress is trees block it every time there's a storm. Some trees go down. <laughs> more than what you use. So I do have like a parcel. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't do there. Right? Mm -hmm. I, usually when I'm driving down to California, so I'm watching those. Most of my view is probably above the UT building, but it's getting better. I'm getting more <laughs> ocean view with every storm. So, can I ask you what that AT and T building is doing? Does it do anything? Any from my view? No. What's it doing? Is it yeah, doing? I wondered that uh, too. Which, that tree that nobody uses. Does it? anybody have landlines? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely people going in there. There's like people every day. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure what they're doing, but they've got trucks there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's one of the improvements for the new design. Yeah. Before, you used to have the cars yeah. this way. And AT and T actually uses all those spots, yeah. as well as E and Pat. But yeah. and you can tell when you're driving by. Because uh, there's no grass growing there, so you know it's always used. Whereas on California, there's grass growing, it doesn't grow at all, so it is, you know, used but not as much. So I'm going to try to keep us on track a little bit because I know we have a lot of speakers, but I do want to respond a little bit. This is the unfortunate bearer and we have bad news that we have to do in a lot of our hearings. Uh, we, we always try to make the best effort at finding the compromise between the applicants and the community for views. But views are not protected. And you know, unfortunately, that, that sometimes means in order to maintain your view, you might have to build up with it also. Um, so we, we really do try to find as much balance as we can, but the reality is that we'll lose things on Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the next uh, speaker is Glenn Isner. Glenn. Glenn. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm not even going to stand up. I'm not going to waste anybody's time. 
Scott stole all my thunder. Um, <laughs> however, I, you know, I'm a firm believer in the fact that uh, everybody in the community needs to protect what they value in their home and views are part of that. Um, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's a beautiful project. I think as long as it meets all the requirements and is, you know, satisfactorily um, water, sewage, everything, as long as it meets all those requirements, I'm totally in favor of the project because I think we need more housing on the coast. I would hope that the uh, I would hope that some of the units would be uh, lower cost housing to house some of the people that support all of us who are, uh, you know, I wouldn't say entitled, but some of us live on this on the coast, and this is a beautiful place to live. And uh, I would uh, I would hope that that would be a consideration. But as far as the plan is concerned, it really looks beautiful. And um, and uh, I, I'm totally uh, in favor of, uh, of the project. Thank you. And the next speaker is uh, Kathy Martin. Kathy? Yeah, right here. Um, I'm not going to stand up. I'm going to do this. I have a question. Um, basically, about, has there been an impact this, regarding the traffic? Because right now, there's no traffic light anywhere in Moss Beach. And it's very difficult to be out on Highway 1 many times. So I'm concerned. Yeah, it's scary. And every day I drive by, there's a new piece of a, a car, and they went and put a road in an accident. So Ah, that's one of my concerns. I can respond to that. In the um, that narrative that uh, is available in the back, there was a traffic study done. Um, well, it's almost two years ago now. This was required by the county, and the result of the traffic study, the last sentence was based on the analysis provided. Subject to county approval, the project would not have a significant impact on the vehicle miles traveled VMT. The VMT is the criteria that um, all counties and cities use now to measure traffic impact. Uh, generally, uh, each unit will generate maybe three or four trips a day. Um, depending on how many people live in it and families and so on. And that's, so eight units of three trips a day is 24 trips, which is, doesn't really have much impact overall on traffic. Most they can just walk to the park. Yeah. Yep. Well, I, obviously it's in a perfect place. I mean, every service that you could want is, is within a block. Most people have to go down there. They do. I mean, because the like market's good for short. Yeah, well, of course. Can I, can I make a comment? I'm sorry. No, I'll share. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was wondering how many bedrooms are in those units? Each unit has two bedrooms. So that could be the first. Right. Okay. We need a traffic light. There's one going in at site. I'm sorry, my legs are Excellent. There's been a. No, let's move to the next speaker. Why now, man? That's Keith Miles. Yeah. Would you like to comment? Sure. He knows his name. Architect, you did a great job. I like the dormers. They're a bridge height. That's awesome. It looks great. Nice looking building. Building. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your comments. And now, uh, last, uh, now the next person is Denise Quadrick. That's called Dennis. Dennis. Yeah, okay. Denise would be somebody who's more like that. That's oh, okay. Okay. That's okay. Uh, let's see. I live in Seal Cove. I've been there over 25 years. I've lived in Moss Beach for more than 30. Um, very respectful of the view issue, as you can imagine. In Silco, that's my whole house is the view. 
Uh, I'm very much in support of this project. It's designed well. It's planned well. Um, I've raised my kids. I've raised my kids here. It's a good place to have a family. And, uh, I see no reason that they can meet all of the uh, details that get laid out, get changed, get laid out, get changed, and go through the mitigating issues that this shouldn't move ahead as soon as possible. Uh, we've already heard about the housing. We know about the traffic. We can't keep kicking the can down the road of the traffic forever. There's only one way in to see the cold now, and only has been one for a long time. Another topic. I'm in full support of this, and I hope it gets done soon. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the last speaker um, attend this meeting in person is Mark Dean. Hi, uh, Mark Dean, 72 steps. You can see part of my house picture. I'll say I, I am very much in support of the project, you know, bringing in housing units to the coast. Um, just a couple of uh, maybe questions. One, uh, I know there's a pre designed workshop where a lot of the folks here spoke. Uh, it was back in 2020. I just wanted to see if there was any considerations to stay about that meeting, if any of the pre design. Um, not that there must necessarily needs to be, but just more curious how that influenced the process. And then the second question is, um, you know, when I think of kind of mix, mix residential commercial use, I think of uh, spaces where you have like the retail and the bottom level, sorry, yeah, retail and bottom level. Mm -hmm. Some of that housing massively in, in closer to uh, Carlos Street. Uh, Maybe push forward there. Obviously, there's there's cost and you know all those factors involved, but um, uh, just seeing how a lot of the mixed residential commercial spaces are developed, it, it seems like that matter could play to address both, both uh, considerations because that's a pretty long lot. Yeah, it is a long lot, and. One of the things that we wanted to do uh, was to use the existing parking lot behind the commercial building. So pushing forward more would have eliminated that. So a lot of projects that you'll see have open parking lots, which certainly aren't very attractive and to some degree are a waste of land. So we were able, because of the slope of the lot, and the existing commercial building and the existing parking lot to compact things into a better, more um, efficient package, I guess is the best way to put it, where the parking's not the overall appearance of the site, but it's under the living areas, which I think makes it a much more aesthetic uh, project to look at. You just don't see a sea of cars at all they're hidden pretty much so that that's what led to the to the layout of the project just want to interject too that it feels like there's going to be a safer intersection for pedestrians than it currently is too that's going to be uh, it feels you know sometimes you have to cross on that side of the street and right there that's what it looks hard to sit there with there is nothing to mess things to develop there is a traffic study that's been going on for years and they're starting to implement it now called connect the coast side yeah. and maybe some of you are familiar with that because there's been workshops and meetings and it's it's like an interminable project and but one of the things that it's led to that's obvious is the crossing of virginia with flashing lights um it was kind of comical when people used to walk across the street with a red flag. They still do. They still do. Wow. It's so dangerous. It's scary. It really is. Yeah. It's like a number. I mean, 
They're still ignored, totally ignored. It's you, you, I mean, I'm going to get get off on here, but yeah, that's a whole the, the uh, that process of saying, okay, now this is safe. I've seen people did they just yeah. drive through the lights go off and on. We need a somewhere, Cyprus, anywhere. We need a a, a light like at Capistrano or anywhere else down the coast so we can get out safely so people can cross safely. Yeah, it's all connected. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So if you have additional comments, uh, please feel free to email me after this. Yes, this probably also goes to the commission. Yeah. And um, okay. Yeah, shall we move to the next speaker? Yeah. Oh, okay. So next speaker is uh Jaina Song Zhu, and uh, her name is Erica. So Erica, please accept this invite and unmute your microphone. And then you may begin speaking. Then I'll ask you to state your name, email address, and email address for the record. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Um, hi, members of the Coastside Design Review Committee. My name is Erica Eisenlauer Drury, and my email is Erica period Eisenlauer at gmail.com. I live at 815 Ethelburg, and I'm here today to voice hi. my concern. Hi. Hi. Hello? Yeah. She just gave her address. Maybe. <laughs> You're not here now. You're breaking up. Okay. Um, I'm here today to voice my concern on the proposal of agenda item two um, with regard just to the visibility and the parking. Uh, I'm the owner of a single family residence on Ethel Door, right behind um, the location. And uh, respectfully just want to say that three story buildings, um, as others have said, it, are not congruent with the current site and is excessive um, for the views of existing residents. I like that the project includes landscaping, but also would respectfully ask that the trees planted not add to the visibility issues that this project will create. Um, as another neighbor stated, this is definitely different from the norm. Uh, regardless of you know what was um, approved in 1973, this is 2023, 50 years later, and you know it wasn't built in the last 50 years, probably because a three-story building isn't appropriate in this space. Um, I agree that this may cause a ripple effect for ex residents around the area, but it obviously I'm sensitive to the housing needs as well. Um, and just lastly, I just would say that there's not enough parking. We have all experienced poor planning um, when there's not enough parking allocated in new multifamily developments. It's not pretty. Uh, two bedrooms per unit could mean up to four cars per unit. As a public servant of this committee, I appreciate your service and just ask that you take uh, the concerns you've heard today into account of the existing residents of the neighborhood, just to ensure the you know compatibility as well as preserve the visual character of Moss Beach. And thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you. Thank you. And Erica, please provide your uh, email address and address for record, please. My email address is erica.eisenlauer at gmail.com. It's spelled E-R-I-C-A period E-I-S-E-N-L-A-U-E-R at gmail.com. And my address is 815. Okay, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. You don't have to thank much your address. Thank you, Erica. And the next speaker is uh, William Huber. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I will uh, allow you to speak. And now, uh, please um, move your microphone. Then begin speaking. Please begin by stating your name, address, and email address for record, please. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, uh, this is Neil Merrilies. My my email is m e r m a d e four at yahoo.com. Um, and I'm a longtime Moss Beach resident, uh, over 30 years. Um, I've been on the, um, anyway, Mid Coast Council and Parks Commission. So clearly involved with local issues. I think we need this project. Um, we need the housing. It's on an infill location. It looks just like many residential houses in the area. So I think it's, it's appropriate. There's always a reason to turn something down and our community's gotten really good at that. So good at that, that we don't have any lower income housing on the coast. And I think 
if we could build some of these projects on um, infill lots uh, close to our commercial district, um, then we wouldn't need large projects that, to provide housing. So I think, I think this is a good step. I think uh, it, it looks completely appropriate for the area and I, I hope you go through with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, just notice, notice that I, I'm really the round person. So uh, William, I'm sorry about that. And now I will allow you to speak. And uh, please unmute your microphone that begin speaking. Please begin by stating your name, email address, and email address for the record. Okay, my name is uh, Bill Huber. My email address is WLHUBER at gmail.com. And uh, I live at uh, 146 Crescent Avenue in Moss Beach. I am a former director of the Montero Water and Sanitary District. Housing in California is in crisis. There are far too few units available to meet the needs of Californians and for those of us that live here on the coast side. In recognition of this fact, the California Assembly passed AB 2011 and the State Senate passed SB 6 in an attempt to remedy the situation. This project is a textbook example of what is needed going forward. It will create housing for eight families. This will enable those eight families to live close to where they work and not have to commute from far afield. It will be eight units that are within a block of the post office, a grocery store, and a family serving park. Public transportation is literally at the front door. A house of worship and the county marine reserve are both a short walk block away, a short walk away. With solar panels on the roof, greenhouse gases will be moderated. It fits the character of the neighborhood, both in scale and aesthetics. Historically, there would be an opposition to this project on the grounds that it would increase congestion, be out of scale for the neighborhood, or would be environmentally damage, damaging. The claim would be made that by increasing density, or you, you are diminishing the quality of life for those that already live here. This project is vitally needed your challenge is to abandon the old paradigms and to use the existing rules, regulations, and laws to enable this project, not to impede its implementation. Are you up to this challenge or will, be, or will we be left with another lost opportunity to meet the needs of those of us who live on the coast side? Thank you very much, Bill Huber. Okay, thank you for coming. And uh, before we close up the comment, I'd like to uh, read the comments for those who are not present this meeting. So we have received uh, letters from um, Julia, Julia T. And um, she wrote this letter uh, in support of this project. And uh, she states in her email that uh, this project will contribute to the housing prices um, of the of the area. And also, uh, we have received a letter from Vic Abadi. And uh, this uh, commenter also uh, wrote a letter in support of the project. And uh, he also uh, stated that the project will contribute to the housing uh, issue in this area. And the next one is uh, we received a letter from Christopher Jury. And uh, this uh, commenter is concerned with the uh, building height, story cap, compatibility with the neighborhood, and visual character of the uh, of the design um, of this project. So yeah, and then the last one we have is from Carrie and Denise Phillips, and um, they wrote a letter in support of the project, and uh, this and also stated that the project will actually be the house. Uh, housing post how the housing issue in the area. So those are the comments I received from um say parties. And um yeah we don't have any raised hands. So Chair please indicate if you'd like to close public comments. Show us for the comment please. Okay then we will go into the session. Can you start? Okay. Um so a lot of my questions were resolved with the fact that there's no floor area or lot limitations for this parcel. So that um, takes care of a lot of those questions and concerns. 
Um, overall, I think that the design is, is very well suited for the style of the neighborhood. There are a lot of other structures in the area that, that this is kind of echoing the design, and I think that it fits well. Um, I I had thought about whether or not I had concerns about a two-story facade from Apple Door, and I think that given the fact that it is still so much under the height limit of 36 feet that is allowed at that location, I think that 24 feet in height is not excessive. Um, the I only had a few concerns that I wanted to go over with the other committee members. Um, some of them I have taken away. Let's get this little that with me. Got it. Um, so the long uninterrupted roof lines is something that we you know bow a lot, and that's something that's a concern for me on this project. I, I had originally marked it up on this feet line as well, um, but I don't think that this one has quite as much visibility. I'm not as concerned since it's going to be between the buildings, um, but I would like to focus efforts on the more visible areas. Uh, another thought, and I'll, and I'll circle back on that. Um, another thought that I had was that I felt that the, the elevator is much better integrated in building two. Um, it doesn't feel as, as odd having it broken apart and more like an appendage with the walkway in between. Um, so I think that it would have probably been more successful School of the able to be integrated anywhere to how it's done in building two. I know that there's a big ripple effect to how that impacts the circulation. The floor plans of those buildings are different because of that. Um, so whether or not this is a big enough concern, considering that it is between the two buildings in a parking area, isn't quite as visible. I wanted to see what the other committee members thought about that. Um, I think that the way that um, the way that the elevator, that the lift breaks up that long E line on the upper door side, I think is really successful. Um, this is still a pretty long uninterrupted roof line, and I think that that can be easily resolved by just breaking the roof there and having this be a vertical expression. I think that that would help it keep it from feeling too long, kind of balances it a little bit. So that's one thing that's a pretty simple change that I think would help break that up and give a little bit of verticality. I was going to make sense. Yeah, so that, that's a pretty easy one. So Mark, if you could move that down just to kind of capture what my thoughts are. Um, I'm not really worried about that anymore. Um, on, the, on building one, uh, this is really the facade that's the most concerning to me. And I think it's because it has so much visibility. It's visible from highway one. Um, it's visible, you know, because it's, you're looking at the hillside and that's what you see. So I was really thinking this is an area where I would like to see this roof line get broken up. And I had also been wondering if there's some way to reconfigure the arrangement of the, the solar panels to be able to break up this roof line with some kind of capacity warmers of some kind, uh, so that you're not just seeing long roof ease with no interruption and then all solar panels in the um, So I wanted to talk about that with the committee. Um, I had already brought up the, the, the screenings, but I'm happy to hear that the, the lattice with the screening is going to be provided on the other building as well. Um, one question that I had that I had forgotten to ask earlier, in this statement from the commercial, uh, this is meant to be, yes, parking for the apartments as well as commercial parking, correct? So there's steps here to bring you up so that you can get over to where the lifts are and to access the apartment buildings. I don't see any railings here. Um, and in some of the renderings, I see railings and some of them I don't. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit and see how we feel if we want that to be all open railing, if we want to have the stone extend up and have it be stone. Um, and I had a similar thought about... This one is at least broken up with the, that's not catching up with me yet, for a second. Um, where the lift is, and we're talking about breaking this roof. I had also wondered if, you know, breaking up the railings with some parts that are solid and some parts that are open railing might help keep that from feeling quite as long and repetitive as well. So I'm, you know, open to suggestions from the committee or also from Ed if you have thoughts on, you know, if you wanted to have it be 
horizontal siding and solid wall for parts of it, or if we wanted to have the circulation uh, expression of stone be something that's brought up. I don't really know if I love the idea of stone being above and not having stone underneath it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last thing, which is pretty minor stuff, but some of the window alignments. So catch up with me again in a moment. Um, this is the only one that I thought really was a bit problematic. Um, and it's you basically see the offset of the, the building as it's you know cantilevered. When I looked at it on the floor plans, it looked like that one was actually pretty straightforward and easy if we did want to align those. Uh, Um, so on the lower level, the window is pretty much in the center, and I copied that and moved it over to the other side, and if we move it over here, it would be pretty much opposite your dining area rather than at the schools. That placement felt like it could be a little bit, this is not where my screen is. <laughs> yeah, it's like I guess. You're saying if you shifted the window from the stools to the table, they would be aligned and equal one above it. Yeah, it feels like it's a pretty, a pretty straightforward, simple change that would kind of make that elevation a little more cohesive. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's pretty much it. I know it's kind of a lot, but yeah, the. The integrated elevator again. I don't know. That's a much much bigger change. That's one of the only things that's kind of a bigger change. And I don't know based on the placement being between the buildings if it's a big enough concern. Mm -hmm. well, I can pull up some three D views if that's helpful. It doesn't seem as awkward when you look at it from the street. You see what I mean about like all the railing and how it starts to feel a little bit busy and then breaking it up might, might be beneficial. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I agree with your comment about bringing the bumping down on the front, which I think Mark already captured. And um, I think that the Ethel door facing the side is very successful. Um, I think it's I think it's also the most public part of the project. Mm -hmm. That's nice to see. Um, my concerns are are two. Um, I feel okay about the elevator tower as it is, although we certainly opened it to talk about improvements. But um, one, and there was a comment earlier about reflectivity with the lightness of the um, mist, I think, colored siding. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have wondered if it might make sense to choose a secondary siding color to break up the massing a little bit, which could also be an opportunity to introduce um, some darker materials but the the other issue which i think is a bigger one uh, that i have a concern about is if we have a building that cantilevers and steps out over the open parking in particular there's a lot of gears and this is why i was asking the question about whether and i think the answer is yes you pull in under the building and then you have to turn left to get to the parking right so there has to be an openness maintained in order for people to access all of those parking spots, which I understand. Um, I think at the at the smallest level, it seems to me like there could be a section of wall continuing from the floor plate of the first floor of habitation down to grade um, adjacent to the entry to the garage. It would make it feel more enclosed, even mm -hmm. though it's really open from the back side. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that would help a lot on both sides for me to feel that the building is ground. Mm -hmm. And so that you know, the gate doesn't feel. Yeah. Or even the, like the, look, this is perfect. So you see on the lower one, yeah, on both of them. 
Well, on this big stone panel. And then it seems like if there were just the opening for driving in, and then if there was another stone panel below, then it would feel like it would feel like the opening to the parking bridge by something. Um, I think the fact that the second story cantilevers out beyond the first story in both cases instead of stepping in is a little bit problematic for me. I was so, concerned about that too. And when I started to think about the project as a cohesive mm -hmm. So in this view, you can see, so I was kind of like, okay, there's not really places where we're stepping in second story, yeah. um, but it's stepping in from the most visible sides. And that's, that's true. That I, I started deleting my comments about that because I originally did. Because they're over the parking that. area. So the parking area there. where, again, we don't have as much visibility. So I was thinking about, if I look at this as a cohesive project, mm -hmm. it is kind of stepping in. Um, it steps in from the outside. Yeah. I think to me, those two concerns for me are related because it feels like it's stepping in and it feels like it's like it's top heavy. Yeah. Right. But so if there was something, anchor. yeah, if there was something there to anchor it, I think that that would be that would be less of an issue for me. I also I do feel like structurally it's true that it can solve a lot of things, but I think you have a soft story here where you have a side of issue of having a lot of openness on issue of you know you come to planning before you necessarily have those things because here we are we might require some changes mm -hmm. um and and i'm not a structural engineer sure. but i wouldn't anticipate even having some shear panels coming down to grade with the help of the engineer as well as helping the building have the sense of being grounded if they use concrete they substantially dependent yeah yeah for sure, um, to have some right panel here, there, it yeah. seems like it'd be pretty just easy to just pull the stone right up here. And even if that extended four or six inches beyond where the wall is, so that it felt, you know, like a footing kind of, mm. um, I would like more of this way. Yeah, just the, the tiniest, you know, like a like a like an eight inch concrete wall typically might extend underneath the wall like that, <laughs> or out out. Yeah. I could see, or you know, maybe it's perfect, but I could see a stone a panel there. And then potentially, I mean, it also seems like now that you're zoomed in, the gray siding is dropping lower on the, the volume that's set back. I think it's kind of data line. It's, yeah, like maybe those things would want to come up together and that data the shift materials and on the other building, there's going to be a similar thing on the top where it just feels like it needs to be more grounded. Is this is this accurate, Ed? Pardon me. Is this accurate? How we've got the belly band here, and then over here the siding goes down lower. Um. Actually, the stone should go up to the, the belly band. Yeah. Belly band. Would that continue? It could. Yeah. Good. Do you think that it should? That would look. That would. That would as long as the stone comes up to the belly band, um, I don't need to wait. Um, I would feel better about that, and then I can see on the other side also. And then probably that's the uh, isn't the south facade, so probably similarly on the north. I don't know what the neighbor so on this part is. is. Part that's a little tough because this is where its county rain is even more expressed as an unbalanced mass. So but the <laughs> can extend at least to the, the on the upper building. Are we calling that building one or this building, is building two? two. The, yeah. the door. So if building two, if the stone wall extended. To underneath the edge of yeah, to underneath yeah, the edge. Yeah, the thing is, I think that that's not the drive by. Is that the drive by? Yeah. yeah. Um, can we look at it in plan? And the problem is, in plan, it doesn't give me. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll have to see. There's a 20 foot driveway that's required going into the parking lot. Yeah, see, it's overhanging the drive by. <laughs> Um, and also, the lower level, the upper level hangs over here more, too. Yeah, I know that's, that's problematic for me. 
It looks like it's 23. Um, it's 20, 11. It's like 24 feet wide. So, I mean, the age pinch parking access as well. well. The entry of 20 is what's required, then um, having 24 is making it feel a little bit more floating in the air. Well, I wonder if that middle almost ends up being where the upper story is. If you could. I don't really want to help that much. You can put a post there. But that's kind of. Um, the other thing I was thinking is if the elevator, I know that this is the bigger, this would be a big change to the control signs of the buildings, but if this elevator was integrated the way this one is over here, mm -hmm. you might have the ability to push circulation and everything over and move this over. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no access through the back side of that parking lot, right, Ed? No. So if we look at that elevation, we should at least have the ability to enclose the building down to the grave on that side. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> and you have two ten foot very quick. It's got to be 20. It's got to be 20. It's got to be 20, and it's got to be 24 feet clear between the parking stalls for backing out and driving. So, this side, because that will be the Yeah. Would you want it? What's the neighbor on that side? Is there another structure there? Yeah, it's an event. It's a. It's, a, it's looking at the telephone switch, right, switching right. bill. So we'll make it really nice for them. No, <laughs> I mean, I think you're going to need a wall to come down to great there. Okay. Just for, for, for food for thought, because you guys are yeah. faster at that. But these do, this lines up with this. Can this be an enclosed thing that closes here and opens up more 20 feet down? Yeah, Connected like, like the garage. Like yeah. 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 I can make that. I mean, I think the, the only other way to address my concern are going to involve reducing the mass of flow of the upper structures on one of the buildings so that it comes like in. Out. Yeah, stepping yeah. in rather than stepping out, which is obviously in which. Big change, um, but that that's that's sort of like the, the focus of my concerns. From the feeling that it's kind of like stepping further further out and hanging out with those so space and not feeling grounded. You're kind of thinking. I don't know why I don't see it like that on that. It's just super duper ridiculously laggy. Um, um, you think you can bring a dot line across? Well, so when. What if it was something like that, and then there was like an opening? I mean, this is probably the height it would have to be anyway. Is there is there a reason that there's a gap between the wall and the building bed? Just to let some light into the parking area, the parking stalls. Mm -hmm. It can be brought up to the bottom of the belly bed again, but um, or it could be stepped down uh, following the grade more. Um, we can look at extending it out to the left as far as we can to the edge of the driveway and pick up some some That's of it. Because you're probably the post is it? But, yeah, but it's mm -hmm. the post is at twenty at the twenty four feet, so you could pick up two feet to the left there and then push it the other one. Yeah, and then I, I wouldn't object. To that. I mean, I think it's it's a good thought to let a light in, but if there was a four foot <laughs> panel of wall and then it was open behind, then you'd have a really good sheer panel and a, a wall, you know a sense of connection down, and you could stall out. Do you think the run the, run the stall all the way up, leave a space, and then add more stone? I I personally I would run the stone as far to the left as it doesn't mess up the parking. Mm -hmm. And then I would have the stone run all the way to the belly band for the first four feet of wall from the front, from the parking opening. And then if there wanted to be um, a, a cut back down. I'm thinking it's going to be able to come back a little bit. 
Or it sounds like it. So you're thinking about a panel right there where the arrow is? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So if you did, thank you. If you did exactly that, you could, bury the column, you could bury the column, you could have a good shear panel coming all the way down to grade. You'd still be letting light into the parking, which I think is nice. And, and that does feel a lot better. It's not on the right piece. And it still sort of jogs out, but I, um, I'll, I'll, I'll take your face the parking side and run with it. It's stepping in from the street. It's stepping in from the street on the other side. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think that, that that helps a lot. And then it could be similar on the other side, or it could yeah. be more enclosed on the other side. Yeah, I don't. Um, I mean, same thing. I would just bring it up. I would enclose the column, and I would make it feel like it's sitting on this heavier base. And then that will always step down, and I think that's that's nice. Yeah, even, yeah, I think so. I mean, if the other one stepped in, I don't know if this one, I think it looks good. We have it shown there. We could, we could find language to. And are you open to this? Are you yeah, open to yeah. this? Just have it not extend, extend stone mm -hmm. I'm horizontally. Gonna, we're going to send you this markup. Right. Just like we used yeah. to. Yeah, no, that would be great. And yeah, just I extend the stone horizontally. <laughs> Yeah, and then does, does anyone else on the committee feel like a secondary siding color? I had thought color, you know? like two shades darker on the base would be nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the pearl is like a uh, it's a pre-done color by Hardy, and I don't think that they have one that's just two shades darker kind of thing. Uh, they might. The colors like but timber part. You leave just for a little darker gray on the lower level? Yeah. Was it, there, one of the neighbors had a concern about reflectivity, and um, oh, this is a fairly light color in real life. Mm -hmm. And I think that it might also just break up the mass. And I think we should also go back and look at the facade that we said was your primary concern, mm -hmm. which is the one that's going to be visible mm -hmm. from the highway. Um, so that's that. We're going to extend the door band. Okay, so this one, this is the one that's pretty visible. Mm -hmm. um, There's a darker color to help break that down. Are those white verticals, are there downspouts in those locations or are those just stripes? To break? It's just the band. The band mm -hmm. uh, is it, expressing the partition between the ends. I mean, it's <clears throat> I like that. I think that it does help break it up since there is no. There's no change in the long term. Um, I actually think two shades darker on the garage level and the level above it would help break up that this up a lot. Mm -hmm. The garage level you'll never see. Yeah. Um, well, in that case, and probably the first the level above you you might not see either. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have a shot from mm -hmm. Carlos Street. But you can almost look at that and somebody standing in Carlos Street, if they looked up over the front edge of the commercial building, mm -hmm. you would see probably the second level of building mm -hmm. number one. Yeah, I feel like you're going to see, you're basically going to start seeing this long roof line is going to be the first thing that you see. Yeah. Um, so thoughts on how to break that up? The, well, it's interesting because if you were to put a dormer on that side, but comparable to one on the other side, mm -hmm. it would be right on the party line between two. It wouldn't be anything that you could really you mean like between the interior. interior. Um, like if you if you did something center, right, it would fall half in one unit and right. half in another unit, which would be awkward to express yeah. on the interior. Actually, what is it? I have this kind of language, and that's the I mean on the interior, it would be kind of tough to. What we could do is to just have a have a slot in the middle of the fascia, yes, right there, and just take it back to the plane of the building. A break in the fascia, right there where the hand is. Yeah, like how deep is that? You? Uh, I think it's two feet. No, it looks like it's more like a foot looking at the uh, elevation. But 
it would be dark then. It would be a, a dark mm, yeah. gap there. Much like the shed roof is over the parking there. Mm -hmm. And the, the space under that lower roof on the, on the first floor, are those, is that bedroom? Yeah, those are bedrooms. Mm -hmm. What if, uh, what if, I'm about to have an idea. Okay. Is it a bay window? I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking like, what if we break up the actual plane and yeah, do bump outs or bump in? Like, I was afraid this. Was, I was thinking about also like, okay, so there's there's four units in each building, right? Yeah, could two of them be two feet smaller or bigger? Because I don't know what the reductions are, but the two end units. Yeah, there was like a little jog, um, so that the two center units. Say we're 18 inch deeper than mm -hmm. two end units. Yeah, so we would like push out right here. Is it keeping up with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, of course, because I would rather see it push in, but um, I, I'm not the one who laid out the nice interiors. So yeah, those you units and you could do that, the, or you the, could the, the rental square footage. But probably a post tension slide. Oh, uh, yeah. And I think I like it better in the middle though because then you're not making this wall plane longer. I would see, yeah, I would, I would, my I think extending two out the two end units and have the middle units, which says one or the other. Mm -hmm. I think, would that be, those and then would we want the shed roof to continue down, or would we want to try to find a way to introduce the gables? I don't know. I the mean, gables would block these windows into section. At first, if the will, if the wind, if the, if the, if the wall pushes out over the parking, that's going kind to of make my concern about it feeling like it's kind of floating in the space. Well, we're, we're, we're oh, yeah. in. Did you combine to make that better? How about it? Yeah. On the section, if the, um, if the wall right there where the hand is, that goes out to the eave, and then the next unit, the wall, come in a foot, and you'd have a, a two foot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's only affecting a few square feet, a few right. square feet. Mm -hmm. But I guess what I'm trying to figure out is how are we going to have that impact the roof line? Because the roof is, is what's problematic to me. So yeah. either the roof feed would continue down and it would have a cut in it, or. It should have the same, the whole thing should just draw down. The roof is goes like that, kind of like, yeah. kind of like right here. At this point, right? That's what I was thinking. At yeah. the center portion, yeah, yes. Or you I mean, I think that's the simplest. Or you could have, oh, okay. you I'm can have, you about the whole roof section going back that way and the, the ridge line and everything. If you move it at two feet, uh, take okay. the whole, just take the first two units and just shove it back two feet, or what vice versa, or what you can It's not going to make much difference on the forming of the. Anything really? And what were you going to say, Ed? Um, on that section view, if the wall moves out to be flush with the eave, leave that there, flush and then the next unit take it back. You think in uh, out in take the eave back? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So the eave would I'm go along, and jump back, back, go along, and come back out again. I think I do too. I do too. Because then at the street, it's going to be a, it's going to articulate the whole thing more. And in the street, it's going to feel a little more set back and supported. And then it's more like a bay or a thing which is popping out. So, um, but is it, are we talking about this? And the, well, both, both, both of them are problematic. Um, both buildings, both levels. Both really roofies are problematic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, building number two, you'll never that the west facade will never be seen from Carlos. Yeah, I'm not worried about building two. I'm worried about building one, but the organic board for these both are Yeah, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we need to work on that. 
Let's see. This part could even stay here. Let's just draw this and this. And then it would go back a little bit. And that would go here, which means that the ridge would actually jog, um, jog too, which is kind of good. I'm, I'm going to trust the market. That's the model complicated right thing. It seems like it would be easier to just have a PD, but I guess you're right. You're just making it section something. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's just units. Mm -hmm. It's true. So you, depending on how far it pushes out, you could even have a little bit of exposed siding here. Mm -hmm. I guess the question is um, rather than yeah, sitting here sorry. for an hour, is there is there a language that says that um, do we have unit numbers on those that units one and four that they're west facing wall bad. is in board of that of units two and three by a minimum of I, mean, I, should, I, I think we can make the verbiage work but so that then I just want to make sure we can have some through. flexibility about how he wants to articulate the roof line or you feel like you want to you want to nail that all let's feel that the easiest thing structure wise and construction wise would just to be Move the, so that's what he's saying. move the wall. Yeah. Uh -huh. But we're talking about breaking the roof up too, not just the walls. Yeah. It's all trusses. No, it's volume. Do I know it's what I'm It's vaulted yeah. ceiling. Yeah. It's, 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 what what if there's a balcony here? We thought about balconies, but the reality of it is very few people use balconies. Yeah, I mean, like the ocean facing view, I bet they're going to use that balcony. But it would break this up a lot. That would make a huge difference. Two balconies there would be enough for that facade. I would think. Well, I was thinking if this other part pushes out, then that's oh, already creating creates the space, creating the space for a balcony. Mm -hmm. That would also then that would break up the lower room. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can go for that. That okay. You right there. <laughs> <laughs> Balconies, yeah, I think two balconies, and then I mean, I don't, I don't want to be quite landed on the language, but I think that we can break the ridge and the plane. Mm -hmm. We can, we can work on the line, but I think that that, that would be with, with, with a little bit of jog that would add that would have the required articulation in between that and the and the stone and the any stone at the base. Yeah. I think this happening. I so I made mean, enough balconies and outboard units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and pushing the inboard units out. You could pull the other ones back a bit too. You can do a little bit of that. But yeah, I guess the question is, what's the depth of the wall? Is this the depth of the balcony or the depth of the difference in wall? Uh, I would say the depth of the di difference in wall plane because I think we can probably leave it up to add a section. I think 18 inches is enough to register, but then like, you might end up wanting to do more. You know, obviously 18 inches. Yeah, because then what you can end up doing is like right here, okay. a little bit of railing. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to break up that part mm -hmm. of the roof also. Right, but you already have some. Yeah. So I'd say, yeah, 18 inches is probably good. I think it's enough. We do say 18 inches minimum, and then you can play with it and figure out what those. Obviously, you say you just. And leave your joist out in that direction. So that mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, three, so two, three feet mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think that that would really improve that saw a lot. And it's it's pretty visible. So that's yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. So then we've talked about the grounding of the base. We've we've talked about uh, bringing the volume, the the forward volume. All the way down the street. Alignings are those. We're talking about those. The darker color. We're talking about the darker color on the base. And then the last thing would be creating articulation with the balconies of the two end units at building number one and, mm -hmm. and you know, setting, setting back the walls of those two outside units or forward, the center ones. Sort of to be left mm -hmm. the discussion for how he wants to make that balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I've got these notes, uh, so we can obviously use these to help mm -hmm. the three of us write verbiage, and then um, Ed, we can also send you the markup so that yeah, you can please do that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I'm not marking up every elevation. Mark, did you have any? Anything else just some things that I think are. I, I mean, there's some you know, opinions and, and hated by people that want to save money, but I like natural wood. Is what I mean. I just I hate that. I just hate that. Natural wood makes robust and makes you proud of it. Well, you know, I, and it's there not are, green, it's not greener. Yeah, <laughs> maintenance is. Mm -hmm. Maintenance is maintenance. That's right. Even people about composite products, like I, I did open joint cladding with tri uh, uh, fiber on for my house so that it looks like a nice warm natural wood, but zero maintenance. Um, they've also got a timber tank is actually doing like a, a tongue and groove one now too. It doesn't even have to be open joint. So that just for future there is and even the hardware no that gets the depth um, one that's got one inch thick. Noted, so we have one give it other. depth instead of this. Well, there's companies that put two and three color graining on it. Yeah. Oh, and then and it's phony, but it looks really, really good. Yeah. I mean, I, in the house we did years ago in Montero, with the deck up on top, the main and second, that's got that on it, and it's it's stood up very, very well. It's like ten years old. And then if you look at it, you'd swear it's real wood. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've seen, I've gone out and looked at some, and I mostly like it just, but I have, you know, you know, the feel of the construction. Yeah. And then the, um, the hand rail, steel, steel rails, I feel like they should just, they should just be framed in. Mm -hmm. right. The stair rails, because the steel could, I mean, 15 out. Oh, they are 15 out. They look trashy. Two years. Yeah. 15 gallons is a pretty good size. I'd like so I think I was looking at the mask, I didn't even think it'd be what it would stone or something. You want that stone down. It's expensive, and I'm not sure. But at least I don't know. I just was talking to Ed about bringing in the stairs, all the stairs, so they have no metal rails. So. Uh, what do you want? You want? I don't know what I want to look like. The California Street View. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I wasn't talking. I was talking about the stairs themselves. So. Actually, yeah, so that was something else I had been talking about earlier. Was you know, like, oh, we want this to be a half like guardrail out of stone, or I mean, if there's going to be a lattice with green, I think we forgot to put a railing on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I was like, okay, well, gonna, like this one's got railing on bass. I think that got misplaced in the render. Yeah, so we'll say the railings will be on the outside. Yes. But I was suggesting that he bring that frame them in. Um, uh, just for these ones that are on the street. I, I have wondered about that too. Um, I mean, are these going to be site? Are they site steps built into the grade? They follow grade pretty much, yeah. Uh, that was the idea is to follow grade, fill it in. Uh, Yes. And the railing, it could be aluminum and won't rust, powder coated. Right. I think, I think that would be, yeah. Um, do I do I think that it would be helpful to the neighbors on ethical door to go in as 24 inch boxes instead of 15 gallons on that side so they go to the small charity? Um, to address the privacy concerns and make sure that they're going to be as dense as they have it and, mm -hmm. and there's well, whatever they you can. I don't know what they are. Well, so it said six to 15 gallons, and a six gallon tree is really not much of a somebody to put it in their trunk, much of a tree. Yeah, I think I thought I'd like to see bigger, more mature, so mature trees going in at least on the um, Ethel Door Street side. <laughs> Um, yeah. 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 Right. They're shown as big, full, mature trees. Yeah. Um, and if you put a stick, a stick yeah. Down, yeah. Are we, are you comfortable with, with that then? Yeah. That, that, that picture there is in 2050. Four inch box is the size of 15 gallons. Well, we won't trees in 25 years. I call out just for those three, just these three. 
I think the Ethel Dorch side is one where, um, you know, we have those windows facing yeah. our neighbors, um, would be the one that would be my priority. I, I feel mm -hmm. like I'm sure the trees should go in as one of the last. I know, I know, but I think that, you know, that's big enough. You're not going to need every crane to get it in, but it's still, it's still, still, a, nice, still a nice mature tree. Is the they get bounced on us, right? So you see him on, is he in my time full time Mind your head. Uh, yeah. Well, I can see his truck there. He's not there. Oh, is there? So is he not there? He's been retired. I saw his tree. Yeah, I thought they were for like fifteen years. He's going to die of cancer. I mean, they didn't. It's like how this is living. What vine? What is? What are the words I'm looking for? Lattice and vegetation. Yeah. And screening. Some diehards left in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> working on the project. <laughs> okay, I think I think we did it. We did it. I think so I, I, I feel comfortable with those edits. So you got the change of the color and the lower logo. Uh, yes, I did capture that on the elevation too. Any suggestion about the wood? Where would you want to see the wood as a suggestion? Well, I want it upstairs, but if you're going to go with the lemon powder coat, that's oh, you meant wood for the rain. Lex hanging on it all the time, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Let people hang the laundry in. Good. Oh, I. Um, <laughs> we could do wood posts and top rail. Doesn't hold up well. What doesn't? Wood. wood. <laughs> Powder coated aluminum. That's you know, it's the same thing we went to a lot of those look like fabric area vinyl window. Yeah, no but um Mark, what where would you want to suggest incorporating natural wood as a suggestion? I mean all I mean all the you want to do the whole building and dirt or something. Yeah. You know what's interesting? You, look at the, I just wish that's have you looked at the Heaven Bay Library lately? Yeah, it's done in all natural wood. In all natural wood. I know. I know they were putting it out. Just try it back. You can't do a clean book like it doesn't look very good. Stay clean. It doesn't look very good. It might be it looked great. In the first week, yeah. I mean, painted wood looks even so much better than party wood. Just a wish. Okay. Are you happy with the with the yeah. changes of the committees? Yeah. Uh, How would you like to? Can, where you have the choice of continuing or uh, have a continuance? Make these changes. No, we we'll will take a vote tonight. Take a vote, take a vote with, the with the conditions and the markups okay. that we've talked about. All right, I'll okay. look at this request of the vote. I'm not going to go through all of these um, again. I think we're all on the same page. You're up. Is Someone is going to make a motion. Yeah, you can. I thought even the chair has to make a I make a motion okay. to approve okay. second okay. object with the aforementioned. Okay. Okay. Second one? Yes. Getting off to yes, Rebecca Kekin. Yes, okay. Um, motion passed. Congratulations. And that's that for the uh, planning commission. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. We appreciate your collaboration. Thank you. Good. That's good. Back. 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 Very good. Hello. Uh, okay. Thank you. So, did you combine the lots for the front? For the it's all one lot. It's all been one lot. It's always been one lot. Um, I just wondered if it's part. I'd like to make a motion to end this meeting. Okay.
I'll second that. Okay. How is it rolling from Stagmire? Yes, please. Any coffee? Yes. Rebecca Jackson? Yes. Okay. Being adjourned. Okay. Bear with us while we prepare. Okay. Not here. That's going to be a little bit of work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for working with us. Yeah, I I just I very strong. It's like yeah